today I wish that we can talk about uh, a very interesting but uh, not always the best topic to talk about. That is mental health uh, or what people are calling nowadays mental wellness. Uh, in my work as a coach and also as a counseling psychologist, I've come across many situations where people are struggling with their mental health issues which are very broad. Uh, and I think many people when they think about it, they think it's when maybe you lose your mind maybe when you are becoming psychotic or something like that. But in most cases, mental health is something we are struggling with in our day-to-day -day living. And uh, many people are actually suffering from mental health issues. It's only that uh, they are not even aware what exactly it is. It's like when you are having a headache, but you cannot explain where it exactly it is coming from. So, and also during the COVID period, many people have got used to living with the problems. And now it is becoming normal for them to accept like that's okay and so it is becoming worse with the time and then when people are coming to finally realize what exactly it is and they get a chance to do so it is at a point where uh, getting back is also not very easy it can either be time costing it can be uh, money costing and in most cases uh, people take too long uh, to recover and get back to normal. And this normal is the expected level of behavior, the expected level of uh, perspectives, and, and all that. So today I wish us to look at this topic of uh, mental health. How can we better? How can we take care of ourselves? How can we be in control, maybe even our emotions and all that? And how can we maintain high levels of uh, mental wellness? And I think I'll start with uh, focusing on the mind. And uh, the mind, uh, which is in our brain, because the brain is the matter. But the mind is what that matter does, the thinking part of it. Every human being has the capacity to think. Uh, and this capacity is very monopolistic. Monopolistic, I mean, you have a monopoly. Uh, you are the only person who can think the way you want. Even if other people or other situations would influence your thinking, you are still the one in control of your thinking. The mind is very powerful because it's also the same uh, component of the body that controls many other organs you know, through the nerves and all that. The mind is also free. Free like it is rarely controlled by other parts of the body. It is usually the one which controls them. The other thing with the mind, it can take different positions because it can be neutral, it can be indifferent, it can be positive, and it can be negative. And that's why the mind becomes a very volatile uh, thing to talk about. Because it's not something you can tell people, I expect you to do this way. For the actions, it's easy to even control people's actions, even by force. But no one can force you to think in a particular way. Uh, sometimes we hear people saying, you have uh, picked my belief system, this place you are thinking like so and so, you are just thinking inside the box. For that to get there, it means you have, over time, allowed yourself, your mind, to take a particular kind of thinking. Meaning, you didn't lose your independence, you allowed yourself to lose the independence. So because the mind has all these aspects, all these uh, attributes, then it becomes no it becomes a bit difficult to, to manage it at personal level. And that's why finally when you find people going through a lot of issues, they have to seek help to get a different perspective. And even when you go for psychological counseling, even when you go to, you know, uh, uh, maybe someone helping you to change your thinking, you realize that at some point they will tell you, this is what we are sharing, this is what I feel, but you have as a person to take action and to change your thoughts, which may be negative thoughts, intrusive thoughts, toxic thoughts, and may be thoughts that are misleading you. Finally, it is left to you. And that is the part which is usually very difficult. And that's why most of our clients, they will come for counseling and maybe they don't get the help. Not because the counselor is incompetent, not because they were not committed, but because they are not able to jump the hurdle or go over the hurdle of changing the mind, the mindset, you know, and the thoughts. So very quickly, I'll take you through some of the things that I feel you can do or you can apply and then try to improve uh, your mental health, uh, your mental wellness uh, for better living and also for better coexistence with other people. Get it to the point number one, practice self-care. Self-care is what brings self-love. And self-love is what makes you accept yourself, be in love with, with yourself, and also treat yourself with respect, with dignity, and also you know the boundaries that you need to have. But when there is no self-care, uh, then in most cases you tend not to be kind to yourself. Sometimes you are very hard on yourself. You are not forgiving yourself. You are not giving yourself the space to 
uh, rest, to, uh, to relax, to understand issues, and maybe to know what can you do and what you cannot do. So you are living in a very black kind of environment. You know, you are not clear. The vision is not clear because there is no understanding of yourself. And that's why even the Bible says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. So this language of love starts with yourself. How much do you practice self-love? And self-love is not selfishness. There's a big difference between the two. And they're almost opposites. It's only that we need to be clear. Self-love is a positive reflection and a positive action towards yourself as a person. Number two, encourage positive thoughts. We have already said the mind can take the various components. The mind can take the various directions. It can be negative, it can be neutral, it can be indifferent, and it can be positive. The question is, which side of it are you going to take this mind? And most dominantly, where will you be having your mind? Because of course, once in a while, you think negative about an aspect, once in a while, you'll be too positive, once in a while, you might become indifferent, other times you will be neutral, you don't know where you belong. But now, in most of the cases, where do you rely? And that's why I would really challenge you to be a positive thinker. A positive thinker is not too much of positive thinking. As talking about being realistic, to be realistic doesn't mean it's a balance between negative or positive thoughts. It means, yes, you are positive, but at the same time, put that in the context of the people you are living with, uh, the things you are living with, and also where you are in life. That's what brings the realistic aspect of it. But it's not a balance between negative and positive that gives us the, that gives us the realistic uh, thinking. So I would challenge you, practice, normalize to be a positive thinker. Number three is streamline your expectations. Uh, someone said that uh, high expectations sometimes can be frustrated men, and they may be women for that matter. What does this mean? It means that we must be in a position to manage our expectations. We should not have too much expectations on ourselves. We should not have very little expectations on, on ourselves. And maybe we should not fail to have expectations on ourselves. So we need just to have a balance. And for you to do this, you go back to point number one, self-love, where you come to also understand yourself, self-awareness. What is my ability? What is my capacity? What is this that I can do today? But what is this that I can do tomorrow? And what is this that I could only do yesterday and I never got a chance to do it? That will help you even to manage what you are seeing from the environment. In this era of social media, you can imagine how many people are doing things because others are doing. So in this case, you realize that many people are going for likes. Many people are going for a lifestyle which they are seeing on the social media. But you do not know the basis. You do not know the, the source, maybe, of the money. Or you don't even know how these people come to get there. So you may do the same things, but you end up failing. We need to manage our expectations. Either in our careers, in our relationship, in our marriages, in our schooling life, and in all the kind of life that we are living, we must, and we ought, and we should have expectations that are manageable. The other thing is about developing resilience. You know, develop resilience but in a very intentional manner. What is resilience? Here we are talking about emotional resilience and we are talking about mental resilience. You know, when you take care of your mind, the mental part of it, it's very easy to take care of the emotions, vice versa. When you take care of the mind, then it's very easy to take care of the emotions. When you take care of the emotions, then you can also take care of the mind. They, they, they interplay, they have a causal effect. Cause of effect meaning either can cause the other. So how then can we be resilient when we are in the midst of so many problems? We only need to understand that life is a function of problems. The question is, how good are your problems? Are your problems necessary or are your problems unnecessary? So that you have a different perspective about emotions, about your thoughts, and then you become resilient. To be resilient is to develop tenacity, to develop strength, you know, to become determined, you know, and to win battles through ta over time, rather, over time. You can win those battles without much struggle. The other one is that we need to be calm during the storms. Most of us, when we are going through uh, some messy situations in our lives, when shit happens in our lives, uh, in most cases we give up, in most cases we become indifferent, in most cases we don't care, in most cases we blame others, we blame ourselves, we are too hard on ourselves, sometimes we even think of uh, you know, taking away our lives and all that. But the question is, what is the best thing to do? Sometimes it's just good to be calm, you know, and hold your peace. To be calm and let things take their course as you do what you're supposed to do. And when you are in this place of calmness, then you can ask yourself, what can I do in this situation? Is there something I can do? 
And also, in the same case, you can ask yourself, what is this that I cannot do? And then you leave it maybe to other people, to your God, and maybe to nature and all that. So it's good to remain calm during the storms. The other point is that we need to celebrate our small wins. You don't have to eat to be a billionaire. You don't have to eat to be a philanthropist for you to give, for you to, you know, uh, respond to the needs of other people. You don't have to wait for you to be done with your studies, for you to celebrate that during graduation, when you have done your master's, your PhD, or maybe your first degree. But you can celebrate the small wins, the internal exams, you know, the end of semester exams, they have come, you have to uh, manage to do them well. Maybe you don't have to wait for you to own your own house, when you move houses, you don't have to wait for you to maybe get into the best relationship. Maybe whichever relationship you are in, what are the peaks that you can have? What are the benefits you have picked? What is the growth you have experienced? Sometimes you don't have to wait to get the best talent that is taking you all over the world. Maybe if you learn how to do the piano, if you learn how to sing, if you learn how to do maybe some exercises here and there, maybe to draw a few things. You know, you can celebrate the small wins. And this can even go to a parent. You know, you don't have to wait for your children to be very successful for you to celebrate them. You can celebrate them through the small wins. But it is more of a personal initiative. Celebrate yourself when you take the small wins. You are doing your book, you have done the first chapter. Celebrate that win. You do the second the same. When you finish the first book, celebrate that win. Then finally, you'll be an author of many books through that process. Then the other thing is to understand your motivations. Every action, every thought, every emotion comes with a motivation. We need to check how good is my motivation? Is my motivation right? Is my motivation worth it? Is my motivation sufficient? Is my motivation worth my struggle? You know, because when your motivations are not strong enough, in most cases you give up around the way. In most cases, you lack the energy, you lack, you know, that vigor, you know, that aggression, positive aggression, that assertiveness towards your goals. So we need to understand the motivations behind our actions, behind our behaviors, behind our thoughts, and behind our emotions. I think that would really take you far in developing that strength and the determination we were talking when we talked about having resilience. The other point, of course, is giving your best in everything that you do. This would help you to avoid the regrets. Most of the people who are struggling with mental health is because they have regrets. I wish I knew. I wish I did. I wish I acted. I wish I met. I wish, you know, all those I wish, I wish, I wish, when they accumulate, they now start bringing anxiety to you. And when you have so much anxiety, which is overwhelming, that becomes the stressful situation. You know, and stress also have levels. When you're in uh, this mild, you are in the moderate, you go to the severe, you go to the extreme, and then nothing is done, then you become depressed. You start getting to the minor levels of depression. So where the, where, what are the roots of uh, depression? It is the negative thoughts. But these negative thoughts, they come mostly through regrets. But if we give every situation our best, mostly we might end up uh, removing regrets from our lives and also encouraging positive thinking to come to us. The other point, the second last is, of course, understand the why of your life, your purpose. Are you living a purposive life? Where you are working, why are you there? The relationship you are in, why are you in it? The career you are in, why are you in it? The project you are taking up, either at individual level or at the family level, why that project? The people you call your friends, why are they your friends? The investment you are making, the savings you are making, why? The school your children are going to, the lifestyle you are living, the talents you are trying to, to, to gather and develop, why those ones? When we understand this why, then our journey becomes a bit easier because in life there is so much pain. And this pain, we can only endure it. But it becomes easy to endure when we understand, when we have the clarity of this why. So the question is, do you have a big reason why you do things? Is your why big enough? Is why your why convincing enough? So that, my dear friend, you have a way of dealing with issues. Even when it is very difficult, even when it is frustrating, even when there is a lot of boredom, even when there is a lot of disappointment, you still remain strong because you understand the why behind your life. And the last point, of course, is when you do all these things, maybe things may not improve, and you still remain in a point of need, then I will be challenging you to seek professional help. When do you seek this professional help? 
when you feel this is the best time to do that. And that best time, you may not wait. You may not have to wait when you are overwhelmed, when you have lost control of your life, when you have lost, you know, the energy even to go for it. Try to seek help consistently. How I wish we would take either counseling or coaching or mentorship or role modeling. I wish we would take it as a lifestyle. Our biggest mistake is that we go for these services only when it is too bad, only when it is too late, only when it is too difficult. I know it becomes even a lot of work to the professionals who are handling you to give you so many sessions. It's also expensive because not all of them will offer pro bono services. You may get a mentor who may work with you for free and all that, but it's very hard to get to be a professional, very competent counselor who may work with you for 15 sessions, 10 sessions, or 5 sessions uh, without maybe having a consideration. So I will challenge you at the right time, make professional help your body. Make your professional help a companion. And in case you are not in a position even to pay for these services, it's always good to share out your heart, share out your mind to your close, trusted friends. That at least will help you temporarily or maybe permanently to help you deal with some of the issues that you may be struggling with. So just to conclude, I wish to say, your mental health is your responsibility. Other people can only come to support you and to give you the much needed help where it is necessary. Other people will come only to boost what you have started. But let us take it personally, take the individual responsibility and trust you me, we can manage, we can take dominion over our thoughts. We can dominate those thoughts. Our thoughts don't have to dominate our system as human beings. But it starts with being intentional and being dedicated to that cause. I wish you well as you do this and I believe your mental health will keep improving and you'll get to mental wellness for better living. God bless you. My name is Samuel Kajak.